Hi. Hi. Good. Hey, thank you for thank you for coming today. Um, so this is a small presentation today. I'm not going to talk during 40 minutes. Um, I wanted to share with you my experience with uh, how we, how do we write the Puppet modules in OpenStack. Uh, so my name is Emilia Maki. I, I work for Red Hat. I'm French. I'm sorry. That's my accent, so you have to deal with that. Um, so I work for Red Hat. I'm, I'm working on OpenStack every day. Uh, my job is to make sure that we can deploy OpenStack with automation tools, and we are using Puppet modules. So we are contributing and using the Puppet modules. Uh, so this talk, this presentation is about how do we write a Puppet module. Um, today we have a, we have a first introduction about the Puppet OpenStack project. Uh, if you're not familiar with the project, I will give some uh, insight about what do we do, what do we deliver, and how you can uh, get involved. Uh, the second thing is I want to make sure that uh, you know how we, you can contribute if you want, uh, if you are interested by contributing, or if you're, if you're already contributing, but you maybe want to know a bit more. Um, I will explain how do we build uh, new modules when some new project is created in OpenStack, what is the process to create a, a new Puppet module, and I will try to make a demo, uh, if it works. <laughs> and yeah, we will have time for questions, so we have a microphone here at the end if you have some questions. Please go ahead and I, I will be very happy to, you know, to help. So, um, first of all, I want to know who in the room is uh, already using the Puppet modules? Okay, so we can go to the beach and have fun. <laughs> okay, so I, I, will, I, will, I will do an introduction about the project. Uh, so OpenStack is very complex, you know. Uh, it's, a, it's a big project. You have uh, many, many things to deploy if you want to get uh, your first uh, VM running. Um, obviously, you don't need to deploy all the services, but still you have some basic, uh, basic things to deploy. So I didn't create this picture. I took it from the official documentation, right? Uh, all the credits to the docs. Um, so yeah, that's very complex. And um, sometimes people, well, maybe not right now, but a few years ago, I, I, I met some people who didn't use any automation tool to deploy OpenStack. And I was feeling like those guys were doing this. So I took this picture last week. Uh, I was traveling in Spain, and I found this very interesting. And um, so yeah, don't try to deploy OpenStack without automation. That's my first uh, uh, feedback I give. Uh, because it's very complex. You need, uh, you need to configure many things that you will, uh, you will miss a lot of things if you try manually. So. So that's why a few years ago, we created uh, Puppet modules for OpenStack. So we, the, the mission statement is to, uh, it is to create Puppet modules to deploy OpenStack clouds uh, at scale for like real deployments in production. Um, the modules are, are written by people deploying OpenStack, so they know what they do and very, very involved in the OpenStack community. So from the developers and operators, so it's like a, a good mix of people in the team. So how does it work when you try to puppetize OpenStack? Um, we, have a, we have a puppet module per project. So if you're deploying, a, if you're deploying a, a, your cloud, you will be able to choose which, uh, which puppet modules to use depending on what you want to deploy. Um, we are using some modules from Puppet Labs to deploy, uh, for example, MySQL, RabbitMQ, Apache. So we, we did not create those modules. We are using them from the Puppet Labs community. They are working very great for us. Um, and we also have some libraries uh, in, uh, for example, OpenStack Lib. Is, it's a library where we have some common uh, if you're familiar with Puppet, we have some common classes that we share across all the modules. It makes the things uh, more consistent. Uh, I, I will go th through the details a bit later. So basically, uh, if, you want to, if you want to deploy a new service, you have to find for the Puppet module. 
And if it doesn't exist, so you're in the, in the good room because that's what uh, we, we are going to see today. How do we create this new module for the service? So we already have a lot of services. You can see uh, all those modules already exist. Uh, and uh, some of them are still a bit experimental, but we are working on this. But if you don't see your project in, in the list, uh, the list is not exhaustive here, but if you don't see the, the, your project in the list uh, of modules on GitHub, uh, you might want to create a new module if you want to deploy this project. So most of the Puppet modules that we created are almost the same. They, they, they share the same structure. We have, a, we, have some re, uh, we have some manifest to create the keystone resources, so the endpoints, the uh, the Keystone service and etc. We also have some manifests to manage the database, so you don't have to you ha you don't have to create the database with your own manifest. We already have this. We support uh, MySQL and Postgres. Um, we don't configure MySQL for you. We we just create the database for the OpenStack service, right? Um, we. We also manage the configuration files for OpenStack. So, if, for example, in uh, Nova, you have the nova.conf file, which uh, will be generated by the Puppet module, and we will create all the sections in the in the um, in the configuration file for you. Um, so, you will have uh, the Oslo section, the Keystone, and all the all the parameters that are specific to the project. So, everything is done by. Uh, in the module, you will see some classes for each service, and everything is done by the manifest. Um, some modules are, uh, well, some projects in OpenStack can be deployed, uh, the, the API service can be deployed uh, with Apache in WSGI. And uh, we, we provide a, a class uh, to, to, to make it, to, to deploy it uh, out of the box very quickly. So you don't need to configure Apache yourself. We already have this uh, this class working, and uh, yeah, every module almost manage 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 al almost every 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 services. So if you if you want to deploy Nova uh, in the module, you will see that we manage all the Nova services you want. Uh, the modules are very uh, composable. Okay, so if uh, you want to deploy. Nova conductor on this server, or if you want to deploy uh, Nova API on this one, so you can split everything. It's very composable. All the parameters are documented, which means that if you're new to the project and you don't know what you're doing, I suggest you I suggest you to look at the at the manifest, and uh, you will see that all the parameters and all the classes are very, in my opinion, well documented. So you can just have a look and see what, what it does. Um, so this is a very, very basic example of how you could deploy Keystone today. So you just have to, um, well, I, I did this morning, so maybe I, I missed something. But basically, you can deploy MySQL and Keystone this way. Um, so yeah, just to let you know that, yeah, that's a kind of manifest that showed that you can deploy Keystone very quickly. The modules are doing everything for you. If you want to do some like uh, custom deployments with uh, very complex uh, deployment scenarios with HA and, and SSL and whatever, uh, you will need to obviously make a, a bit more than, than this, uh, like uh, feeding some parameters and, and so on. So how do we test the module? Um, when we, when when we, when you create a, uh, when when you create a patch on your laptop, you want to send the patch uh, to the Puppet modules. You have a, like a bug fix or you have a new feature. Uh, the patch will go through the gate, and the gate in OpenStack we have different kind of tests. Uh, some of them can be run on your machine, but some of them are uh, well. It's very complicated to to execute them. So we have the the CI jobs in place. Um, so for the one you can run on your, on your machine, we have the unit test. We use uh, the airspec. If you're familiar with airspec, that's cool. Uh, if you need some help, you can ask to the team. And, and we are always happy to, to, to help when, uh, when someone needs help to write some tests. Um, we are using also Beaker. Beaker is uh, 
Uh, it's a Puppet Lab framework for um, functional testing. So we execute the catalog on a machine and we check that uh, we can at least compile the catalog and install the service. We don't make any uh, test on the service itself. We have some integration tests. Integration tests, we are running uh, Tempest. So if you, if you submit a patch in Puppet Nova, for example, um, we have some integration tests that will actually deploy Nova and run Tempest to make, sh to make sure that uh, you can spawn a VM and so on. So that's uh, actual tests. Um, we have, at this time, we have four scenarios for integration. So we can cover all the projects that we have in the Puppet modules. Um, everything is documented in the, in, the, in, in, in the Puppet doc, but in the Puppet OpenStack doc, but uh, it's not covered by this presentation. Um, we also have some testing um, by the OpenStack installer. So we have Triple O and Fuel. They, they use the Puppet module, so we, every time you submit a patch, uh, we also execute the, uh, the triple O and fuel jobs to make sure that we don't break them. So that's also very good feedback for us because fuel and triple O are two installers used by a lot of operators and they are production ready. They are deploying HA, multi-node, so it's very close to what you have in your cloud. Even if you're not using triple O or fuel, it's, it's, it's much more close than uh, if you use DevStack or something else. Um, so yeah, that's for the testing. A lot of testing. Uh, we, we made a huge progress over the last year because we thought that uh, testing is very important when you write Puppet modules. It's uh, actually uh, making sure the, the things work. Um, so now, how you can contribute? Um, who is already contributing to the module in the room? Okay, good. Ten people. So, how to contribute? It's very easy. Um, there are, you don't need to be a developer to contribute. You can be a user. You can be an operator. Um, the first thing I like is uh, giving feedback. So, if you come to me at the end of the session and you say, hey, we use the module, it works fine, but that's already a contribution because that's feedback and we need that. So if you want to give feedback, you can give it through IRC emails or if you can file a bug, that's, that's, the, that's the first contribution. Um, if you're familiar with Puppet, you can write some code, you can submit uh, new features, you can fix some bugs if you want. Uh, we also have a documentation repo, so if you want to improve the doc. Um, and like I said, we have some tests. If you're familiar with uh, AirSpec, you can also improve the, the testing coverage. And if you're like a user with a lot of experience in Puppet OpenStack deployments, you can help on IRC with troubleshooting and welcoming new, uh, new contributors who wants to, you know, like deploy the first time. So that's, yeah, that's multiple ways to, to contribute and how to, well, how to technically doing this contribution. There are many ways, many channels. Uh, the first one is to join us on IRC. We have a, a free node channel, Puppet OpenStack. If you're not here, you should join maybe. Uh, and we have a, a good team that, who, who are here all the day. Uh, we make good jokes and yeah. Um, if you don't have a, an account for OpenStack, you need to create one. I'm not going through the details because that's a, that's a bit long, but I put the link if you want to, you know, to do it. Um, it's always good to subscribe to mailing lists because we are doing a lot of communication on the mailing list. Uh, like, uh, for example, when we, I don't know, when we change something critical in the modules that will impact you as a user, we usually try to communicate through the mailing list, making sure that you guys know that we are maybe going to break something and why we are doing that. Um, or we are also doing some uh, communication around the, you know, the, the release management and, and some design sometimes. So that's also a good way to, to get involved. Um, we have a weekly meeting on Tuesday. 
Um, and you're always welcome to join if you have any question, like even if you're new to the project, you want to start contributing, uh, you can join the weekly meeting and say, hi, my name is, you know, and I want to help. How, what can I do? So that's also a good forum for us. And obviously you have the launch pad. If you have any bug, any feature you want, um, we have uh, one launch pad. Uh, so for example, uh, we have one launch pad per, per module. So if you want to create a bug in Puppet Nova, you will have to find the Puppet Nova launch pad. Um, but if you have any question about launch pad and how the process works, uh, you just go on IRC and you can ask people who just help the same day. Um, so okay, so let's go through the real topic today. Um, so how do we build a new module? So first of all, uh, I want you to keep calm and wait a little before writing code and because in the last years, many people created new modules and my first feedback on this thing that most of the case, people created the module on their own and they try to bring to OpenStack and that sometimes doesn't work because the module is not consistent with how do we do. So keep calm, wait and learn what we do. So don't create the module on your own GitHub if you can wait and communicate with the community before, making sure that we are doing the right process, that's great. Um, so the first step for you is to check on GitHub if the module doesn't exist already. So if you want to create a module for, I don't know, I've heard before someone was working on Dragonflow, so we don't have a module for Dragonflow. So you can check on GitHub if you have a module for this thing. Um, that's the first good step, making sure that you are not creating something that already exists. Um, and then we have, um, we have some process to, uh, you know, communicate about, hey, uh, so we don't have a module for this project. Can I, can I work on it? Can I start this? Making sure that nobody else is already doing this work, you know. Um, because it's a new repo, uh, we, need to, we need to change some little things in the governance. It's nothing, it's nothing difficult, it's just a patch to do and usually the, the core team is doing, is doing it for, for people so there is nothing to, to worry about here. Um, the most important thing is to create the, the, the repository. So for that you need to submit a patch in OpenStack Infra if you don't know how to do it, don't worry. Uh, we have people in the team, they do this very, uh, very often. So we can even do it for you. Um, so the, this, this thing will create the repo for you. It will create the CI jobs, uh, the Gerrit permissions and so on. So that's the first step before uh, writing code and, and writing the module. We, you need to create the repo. And then when we, once we have the repo, um, we will run a tool that's called Cookie Cutter um, that will generate the Puppet module, so the basic structure for you. Um, so you don't have to write everything from scratch. We already have all the, all the manifest and all the files. I, I will go through the details after. But you have a, just to execute a script and then you can uh, continue to work on uh, writing the, 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 the rest of the module. So how does it work, cookie cutter? We have a, so we have a, a small process of uh, generate the module. Um, so you have to clone a repository. By the way, everything is documented. Uh, I'm going to try the laser. Yeah, so everything is documented here. Like, this is like a very rough summary I, I'm doing here. But the whole process is documented here. Um, so you don't have to learn everything like this. But yeah, so you have to clone the cookie cutter. It's a repository that we created and there is a script. You just run the script. It's asking you which, uh, what is the name of the module? And I think that's it. So it's very easy. And when you run the script, it will generate all the files that you will need for, uh, for the module 
like a gem file, rake file, all the spec stuff, the testing that you maybe don't know, uh, the, the manifest that we have in OpenStack, um, and yeah, all the things you need. And at the end, when you're done, you can submit your patch. It's usually a very big patch. And uh, the, the team will approve this patch, and you, know, you, you will be able to continue to write uh, just the manifest that uh, you, you want to be in the, in the module. So the process is very easy. And we created that because um, we, we don't want people to lose time on doing always the same thing. So we have this tool, which is generating all the basic stuff for you. Um, so when you generate this Puppet module with Cookie Cutter, uh, this is what you get. Um, you got manifest to uh, Keystone resources, like we said before. You got manifest for database, uh, the logging, the unit and functional testing, uh, the release notes. If you're not familiar with the, uh, Reno, it's a, Re Reno is the official project in OpenStack for release notes. So there are some like specific files for uh, managing the release note in the module. Everything is generated here. And all the Puppet dependencies, uh, so yeah, met metadata and, and so on. Wow, demo already? OK. <laughs> Wait, OK. <laughs> OK. So yeah. Without my hands, look. <laughs> so you need to install Cookie Cutter. It's a Python. Uh, it's a Python project. So you need to use Pipe to install Cookie Cutter, uh, and then you need to install two gems, uh, Digest and Module Sync. What? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. This is. This is the best I can do. OK, sorry, sorry. So this is the script. We just run a new script. So I took the example of Nova. So you just run the script. You say Nova, and that will generate um, the things for you. So you create uh, you know, um, module name Nova, the here. And it's cloning the repo. So Puppet Nova is not empty, but it's cloning the, the new repo. And it, it will create all the files. And uh, at the end, you can go in the repository and check the files. So everything is created for you. Uh, so you have the initial commit with uh, all, the, well, all the files and all the modifications. Uh, so this is a first iteration of the module, which means that uh, the init manifest is, is empty. There is nothing. But you also have the keystone out, so you don't have to create the, this manifest. It's, uh, it will be the same as the other modules. It's just that that's for Nova, so it creates the Nova endpoints, Nova service. You can change the port of the endpoints. That's, that's part of the process. Uh, you can also manage uh, the database, MySQL. So we create the Nova database. We manage the uh, DB sync with Nova Manage. And when you're ready, Git review, you send the patch, and the team will review uh, the, well, this first iteration of the module. Um, obviously, the next step for you is to uh, you know, work on the module to add the services you need, all the configuration parameters. Uh, usually, OpenStack has a lot of parameters, so uh, we used to, you know, like try to support them. And and questions time. Thank you. So, if you want uh, to ask anything, please go ahead. There is a mic here. And if you have any feedback about the Puppet modules, or if you have questions about the process, maybe I want to fast for something, please, I'm very happy to.
ones well. Thanks. Uh, I've worked with Puppet a lot and with these modules, and my problem is that there seems to be a really long development cycle. Like um, you, you write a change and to test it, you have to do a deployment and loads of things to make sure that your change doesn't break things. Have you found something that kind of shortens it? What's your um, usual workflow for these things? So is your problem that the test that we, we had in the gate take too long time? Is it the problem? Or? Uh, not necessarily the test. When you're changing something locally, you have to apply the manifests again and again and again. And sometimes right, the unit test? No, doing the deployment locally, for example, or um, you have to redeploy from scratch to make sure you don't, you have a thing that works. So do you, do you have you run into that? Or does it get easier <laughs> with time? Well, the well deploying it depends of how many services do you deploy. I guess you have complex deployment maybe. Um, usually it takes maybe twenty minutes to deploy everything from scratch, like install the packaging and configure and run the services. It takes twenty minutes. Even the tests that uh, take uh, uh, like maybe five or ten minutes in this thing. So I don't have any like uh, good reply to this. Uh, my feedback on the test are that uh, if you test locally, uh, you might need to use like uh, some snapshots if you want. For example, on, on, uh, when I'm doing functional tests on my laptop, I have a snapshot of a VM. And uh, if I do a change in Puppet Nova and I realize it doesn't work, I come back to the snapshot and I try again, you know. I'm not reinstalling everything from scratch. I'm doing snapshots. So that's a way to do it. Um, I hope it helps, maybe. Hopefully it does. I think it will. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, welcome. Um, so I've been using the, like, the Juno versions of the modules for a while and just looking at like, upgrading, so I'm looking at all the new versions of the modules as they are now. How does the OS service default fact thingy work? I see that a lot in the new modules that wasn't there previously. Have you seen the? So can you repeat your question, please? Um, like in the, in the new modules now, there's this OS right. default. Yeah. It seems to be a fact of some sort. Yeah. How does exactly. that work? It's OK. So, that's, <laughs> um, so it's a fact that we wrote. And if, if the fact is, uh, is set, if, if you are using it, um, we have a provider that will just um, <coughs> that we just make sure that this parameter is not set in the configuration file, OK? So which means that, for example, um, in Nova, if you set uh, OS service default to uh, the parameter, I don't know, like a, a scheduler, scheduler backend or something, um, the parameter will be unset in the configuration file. So we, we will use the default in Nova, right? So why are we doing that? It's because uh, we don't want Puppet modules to override all the parameters. We want to, uh, we want to, we want to uh, add the parameters that you need, that you need, that you set in the, in the configuration. But we don't want to be uh, uh, like, uh, you know, we don't want to choose for you what, you what you configure in the files. So we have this fact that we just make sure that the parameter is not set in the file. And if it's not working, if the default value is not working for you, it's maybe a bug in, in the project itself. And, um, and that's not, we don't want to deal with the default value, you know? Yeah, we had, we, so we had, we had to, in the past, I remember that the modules used to manage default values. We were uh, taking the default values from the, from the project. So for example, we were uh, hard coding the, the, the scheduler driver in the, in the Puppet Nova module. But when, when Nova used to change the name of the, the driver, uh, the module was broken because we were according this thing. Yeah. So we, we said, OK, let's stop doing that and use defaults from upstream. And if something is broken, it's upstream. Try to fix it there. Obviously, we can fix it in Puppet if something is very urgent, you know. But that's, yeah, that's the, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's thanks the a lot for the modules, by the way. Welcome. Thank you.
Hi, there's Hi. Um, a lot of talk and effort um, on containerizing all the, um, the OpenStack processes and services. Where do you guys as the Puppet team see the role for the Puppet modules and, and the future for the Puppet modules in that light? That's a good question. So, um, mm, I can give the example of the project I'm working on. Uh, I'm working on Triplo, and we are deploying uh, OpenStack on containers, and we are still using puppets. So, it depends of, well, I know also some people, I don't know if Matt is in the room, and Cody, uh, I don't know, he, I don't know who, uh, Matt is not here, but they are doing uh, container deployment with Puppet modules. They are, orchestration, they are doing orchestration with Puppet to deploy the containers, and they are still using Puppet to generate the config files. Uh, so there, is, there are different ways to, to do it. So like I said, I'm working on Triplo, and on Triplo we use Puppet modules to generate the config, but we use something else for the orchestration. So we just, we just think that the Puppet modules are very good to generate configuration files, and then we use it for, uh, you know, for running the containers. So it depends of um, how do you use puppets. I think all the use cases are different. And so do you contain or create the configuration files on the host and then attach a directory to the container, or do you create the configura configuration so files in the container? So we create a config file in a container, and then we ship a uh, well, I'm not working on this today. I don't have the details, but basically we create the config file on a container outside, and then we build a, we build a, we build the container and we ship with the config file. I think that's how it works today. I'm not sure. I can maybe catch up after if you want. Uh, there are some triple folks here, so maybe I can ask. Uh, but yeah, we use it to generate the config. Right. So the cookie cutter, is it only for the very beginning of a project or does it help you to kind of update something that like if you add, add like I think auth token for instance was added relatively recently, can you use cookie cutter to then update an, an existing module to bring in those new features? That's, that's a good question. So cookie cutter is for the initial uh, creation of the module, but we have something else that is called uh, module sync, and we have a project for this. That it's, uh, actually, cookie cutter is using module sync to synchronize the, the repository. If you already have a module, if you already have a, like a, a Git repo, it's a Puppet module, and you want to sync with a uh, the other Puppet modules. So we have this tool, which is not covered by this presentation, but it's, all, it's also documented. Uh, I think you have to run one command, and it will just, you know, like, try to synchronize the... I, di I didn't do it. So some people in the room did, I know, but and I, I know the guy who, did, who, who wrote this tool is here, and, you know, so you can ask uh, Yanis. He knows how it works. Yanis, can you raise? Yeah. Uh, but cookie cutter is for initial uh, creation of the module, right? But it actually uses module sync, so that's that's the same tools. Cool. So we have five minutes. I guess we're done. Thank you, guys, and. Uh, I I hope you enjoyed the, the summit, and uh, yeah, see you soon.